Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Nitro Magnum. This board features Nitro's cam out camber profile, which is camber dominant with a small rocker in the tip and the tail. That camber is gonna give you all the load pop, snap, and drive, while that rocker in the tip and the tail is gonna give you ease of entry in and out of turns, as well as slight help when you do fine powder. This board's available in 159 wide, 163 wide, 167 wide, and 171 wide. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day. There was warmer temps, so you had slush, chop, chunder, a little ice, and perfect hero snow, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. So overall, this really isn't that stiff of a board, so that means softer nose that progressively stiffens back up to the tail. The torsional flex is abundant. It's not very rigid. You can really twist this board. The width of this deck does give it its stability. So when you're cruising a groomer, you might notice that there's a little chatter in the nose. That doesn't resonate underfoot, but you start to get into lumpier terrain, and then all that resonation comes right back underfoot, and you start to feel it. This board at speed and lumpy terrain, you feel everything and you can get bucked around, so you wanna keep your knees bent. The nice thing is that with, again, adding stability, also plows through softer chop and chunder. I'm not saying you're not gonna feel it, but it will plow through it rather than just sort of getting skipped across it or getting bucked around. This board can get in the air, it's not exceptional at it. You do have camber underfoot, which is nice, so when you load it up and roll back on that rocker in the tail, you get a little bit of spring, not a lot, and basically what you put in, you get very minimal amount more back. So if you want to send a side hit, go for it. Launch a cat track gap, you got this. You want to ollie over a family of fat skiers? Well, you're going to be sucking your knees up to make sure you get that added height. When it comes to the butterability of this board, it's not what it's for at all by any stretch of the imagination, but someone's going to try it with the tail. It's high speed wheelies when you're bored. With the nose, you got a little bit more of a platform and it's a little softer, so you can pop a 180, press into it, pop back out and go on your way they're not gonna be great. You're gonna be able to do them, but they're not going to be great. So overall, this is a board for someone with a big foot that's a beginner intermediate that's looking to carve. With that said, there's some things you gotta know. You have to throw your weight outside the front foot to get it to engage. So you're basically driving with your hip off the front to aggressively steer this. And then as you transition back more underfoot, you'll disengage that front foot, drive your knee into the center, and it becomes a back foot dominant carver. That's if you're doing deep, hard, aggressive carves. Now, the nice thing is when you're doing those mellow setup carves or medium carves, you've got the power pods underfoot. That is added contact that's gonna let you ankle steer, which works in conjunction with that torsional flex. This is where this board actually stands out. Short, tight, quick carves, medium, mellow carves, you just sort of swooping around the trail. It's totally fine. It's only when you wanna be aggressive with this thing that you're throwing your weight into it, which is nice because as someone's learning to progress, they're not gonna have to deal with that until they absolutely need to. So for someone that's just sort of swooping around, they're gonna be great. Overall, it's not bad on edge, it locks in. You feel secure when you're on it. It's easy to disengage and re-engage the carve if you have to. Who's this board for? The big footed free ride guy that's just starting out. Having a size 10 boot, I really don't worry about booting out on most decks and with this thing being exceptionally wide, there was no worry at all there for me. For you bigger footed riders, you'll enjoy this. It's not an aggressive board by any stretch of the imagination. It's gonna be good for someone starting out with a big foot or someone that's a progressing intermediate that isn't the most aggressive rider. You'll hit that wall and you'll go, it's time to progress beyond this, get a beefier board and go from there. It's not a bad board, it's not a great board, it's just a snowboard that does what it sets out to do. Comparable boards, the Amplit Big Kahuna, the Libtex Skunk Ape, the Ride Smokescreen. Finding recommendations, the Nitro One, the Rome DoD, the Bent Metal Action. This has been my review, the Nitro Magnum. Do you agree, do you disagree, do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications, that way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you wanna support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.